Yo, what is poppin', guys? Welcome to the fourth match and final match of our GBA Fan Draft League divisional run. So, I'm super excited. We're sitting at two and one with a negative one differential. So this game is super, super important for us going on to the next round. If we want to make it onto the round of 64, this game is one that we need to win. We need to get back over uh, zero differential. That's that's the main reason I don't want to lose. If I had lost by, you know, two to two to zero, and I was still sitting at one differential, I wouldn't mind being like two and two with a zero. But two and two with less than a zero differential just isn't enough to make it to the next round. So this match is very important to go. We're playing my man Arctic Weavile, somebody who I've gotten to, I've talked to a lot since we've started this this whole GBA FDL thing. And his team is really, really nice, as you can see. He's got Tapu Bulu, Heatram, Porygon 2, Mega Gallade, Manaphy, and Zapdos. So, definitely an OU looking team for the most part, and definitely scary. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident in the prep that I brought that is, it's going to be nice. I, I prep very hard for this match, you know, seeing as he's the person I talk to the most. Also, I don't understand why my, my showdown icon has changed to Dawn. It wasn't like that when I first did the battle but it's doing that whenever I pull up the replay which is super unfortunate but just imagine it's the cameraman that's always there filming the beatdown going on so <laughs> which is why I have him there by the way is because I like to film the beatdowns so let's go ahead and talk about our team we have thunderous therian with an expert bell psychic thunderbolt focus blast and hidden power ice I felt unlike last week or unlike our last game this set works a lot better for this team. That set was kind of specially tailored to take on Pokemon I felt like I had trouble taking on. Whereas this one is a more traditional sweeper with good coverage to take on pretty much anything that's going to come my way. The only thing here that I can't two hit KO is going to be that Zapdos. And it's a three hit KO with Hidden Power Ice. So as long as I get some chip damage on there, um, this Thunderous should have a pretty good time sweeping through his team. Next we have Mega Sapli with Will-O-Wisp, Recover, Foul Play, and Knock Off. I'm a huge fan of this Pokemon, obviously, as you guys know, as I drafted it. It's got Will-O-Wisp for the Mega Gallade and the Tapu Bulu. It has Recover, uh, Foul Play, which I actually regret bringing. It doesn't really do a whole lot, seeing as his main attackers resist Dark-type moves. Gallade resists, I think. Well, it's, I think it's neutral on Gallade. And it is a Swords Dance set. That's why I brought it. It's neutral on Gallade, and it's a Swords Dance set. I assume he's going to move. I know he's a Swords Dance set because I watched the game, but it's always safe to assume that a Mega Glade or is a Swords Dance set because if it's not, hey, you know, you just have that extra bulk. And if it is, thank God you put the extra bulk because Mega Glade is a Pokemon that can easily blow back a team if you don't check it at the right time. So I felt like Foul Play was a good bring. And Knock Off because Knock Off is just good for getting rid of items and all that sort of thing. We have our boy Dragonite with Ice Punch, Earthquake, Outrage, Dragon Dance, and Iceum Z. So, I'm super excited about this particular set. I brought Iceum Z for the Tapu Bulu as well as the Zapdos. And the only thing I really don't have that great of coverage for is Manaphy. And I feel like he will send out Tapu Bulu before Manaphy so that I can Ice Punch it or Sub-Zero Slammer it and have free Outrages just to throw off because Heatran is a Mon that's scary but I'm not as worried about. I feel like I can wear it down pretty pretty easily with my switches and things like that by playing smart around the moves that he brings, especially once he reveals what moves he has. So I felt comfortable bringing Outrage because of having such a good answer to Tapu Bulu and decent answers to Heatran. So next we have Tapu Fini with leftovers. It's got Scald, Moon Plat, Moonblast, Hidden Power Grass, and Defog. I brought Hidden Power Grass because I wanted something to hit the Manaphy on the switch in. It doesn't do a stupid amount of damage and not even really that much more than Moonblast, but I couldn't think of anything I really wanted to bring more here. It doesn't really have a lot to do for Porygon. I wish I, I could have brought like Taunt or something or Nature's Madness, but anyway. It's not that bad of a bring. It's good for Manaphy, especially if it starts to get crazy. But anyway, we'll move on from that. Sorry. Um, the Tapu Fini set was not my strongest set this week. We also have uh, our Arcanine here. It's got a Figgy Berry with Intimidate, Wild Charge, Flare Bits, Flare Bits, Flare Blitz, Bulldoze, and Extreme Speed. 
just kind of just takes on a lot of threats on his team. I like Bulldoze because if we can outspeed Manaphy, the Wild Charge is going to do about 30 to 40% every time. So if we can Bulldoze the Manaphy on the switch in, we can catch him trying to do a Rain Dance or something on the switch and get the Wild Charge off and hopefully put it in an E-Speed range. So... Yeah, I think that's. I think I. I mean, obviously, I love Arcanine. If you if you watch my channel, you know that I have Arcanine in almost every league. So I'm very well versed in how to use Arcanine at this point. Also, uh, as as it goes without saying, Bulldoze is for Heatran and really just anything that wants to switch in. His team isn't the fastest team, but mons like Manamphy and Gallade can be tr definitely be troublesome if you can't outspeed them. So I just felt more comfortable having the option just to bulldoze on whatever comes in if I feel like he's going to switch. So, like for example, if I bulldoze on the Heatran and he switches out to Tebu Bulu, it may not do that much damage, but it will lower his speed, which is super important. Whereas if I was just carrying Earthquake and it switched, it would just do the minimal damage without the other side effects. So that's why I chose to bring Bulldoze this week, because he has the Tepu Bulu to kind of neuter any ground damage I'll be doing. So I needed to make it worth it to bring to cover for that Heatran. And I didn't want to bring Close Combat, even though he does have the Porygon. So here next up, we have Metagross. It's got Meteor Mash, Earthquake, Stealth Rock, and Bullet Punch. This set was more of, I didn't really know what to bring. I think it, it matched up well against Glade as well as Zabdos if it's not carrying Heat Wave. And it matches up well against Tepu Bulu. So it just matched up a lot better than some of my other Pokemon did. Dugtrio I didn't really need to bring because it does do a good job of trapping Heatran, but it doesn't really do a whole lot to anything else. So... I felt like bringing Metagross was my best choice this week. Anyway, and also Metagross has the Shuckaberry so that it can survive some of those hits. So We've been talking about this team for a long time. Let's just go ahead and get into this game and our look at our final FDL match. So we're going to start off with Icy Wrist to Sableye as we, as we are wont to do. It's always nice to get that Mega off because if you don't lead Mega Sableye, you can't just switch it in and bounce the rocks back. So if you don't lead it and they lead something with rocks, like they're getting rocks up. So here I'm just going to go for the knockoff because all of my things to handle this Heatran besides Tepu Fini like to use ground type moves. And I was worried about switching in my Tepu Fini because I didn't want to see like a Flash Cannon or a Grass UMZ Solar Beam. But he does go for the Earth Power right here as I switch in Arcanine, which is super unfortunate. He is going to switch out and go into his Porygon as... I am also, I think, no, I'm sorry, I just go for the Bulldoze. See, that's the, that's a perfect example. Unfortunately, it doesn't really do a whole lot to the Porygon because that thing is slow as dick anyway. But that's the general idea I had, that anything that he brought in was going to be slower if, he, if I had that Arcanine out on E-Tram. So he was going to go for the Tri-Attack as I switch into Mega Sableye to eat that up like a nice uh, Continental Breakfast. He's going to switch out here, so I'm going to go for the knockoff again. He does bring out Heatran, which is nice. Foul play doesn't do that much more to Heatran, so I didn't really have a much better play there than knocking off. I really need that EV light off the Porygon, because Porygon is that thickness with the pinch emoji. <laughs> so, here he's going to switch right into Tapu Bulu, as I actually double out and go into my Tapu Fini, expecting him to... I guess stay and do his heat train, which he obviously doesn't. So I cannot stay in. That's that's <laughs> that Tapu Bulu is about to we could definitely punch a hole through my face. So I'm gonna bring in Arcanine and get the Intimidate off, and it's going to bring me down to four percent on the Wood Hammer as I pop my Figgy Berry and get up to fifty-four percent, which is super super nice because now he's pretty much forced to switch. He can tell that he can't take me out with the Wood Hammer. And he, I could definitely knock him out with the Flare Blitz. So here I am actually just going to go for the Bulldoze. Doing a little bit of damage on that Manaphy, but lowering its speed. So here I anticipate him trying to either switch or set up a Rain Dance or something. So I'm just going to hit the Wild Charge button and do a good 52% to Mega Galate, which is super nice. Because this thing, as I said, is very scary. Now I know it's faster than me and I don't want to risk it knocking out my Arcanine because I definitely need my Arcanine. It's doing good things. So I'm just going to switch into my Mega Sableye here in case he decides to close combat, which he does. So Mega Sableye is switching very, very nicely here into pretty much anything that it needs to. So 
I'm a little bit nervous about this glade, so I can't remember if I do a knockoff. No, I, I wouldn't knock off because it's a mega. So I'm just going to recover here and get some health up because I don't want to risk will o wisping This is probably flash fire Heatran. And I don't want to give that thing a fire boost because I was trying to burn the Gallade. That's a that's an easy read to make. So here I'm going to switch out into my Tapu Fini, anticipating a flamethrower, which he does. I, I don't see why he wouldn't. If it does 45%, I'm sure he knows that that's a roll and then he can take me out with another one. So it seems smart just to switch into Tapu Fini here. We're doing a lot of switching and a lot of counterplaying and things like that in this game. And while I wasn't playing great to start off with, my Arcanine lost a lot of health and all that things. I think I'm doing a lot better now. I fire off the Scald there, and I get the burn off on Tapu Bulu, which is amazing because that Tapu Bulu is severely neutered now. I can definitely live a Wood Hammer now that he is burned. And he's just going to switch right out here into Manaphy as I, I think I double into Arcanine. Yeah, there we go. So, I'm not sure what he's going to go for here. Uh, he, he could set up a rain dance. He could switch. I mean, he switched last time, but he doesn't have a reason to switch this time. But he just goes for the heal bell, which is super interesting. And he's going to heal his Tapu Bulu as I do get off a free wild charge. So that was definitely a good trade for him, I think. He's still in the green as far as health goes, and I can't two hit KO him with wild charge. So I am kind of forced to switch out here. And now that Tapu Bulu is pretty much sitting scot-free, I switch into Tapu Fini because I see the Surf coming here and I know that it can take it very well, it's very specially defensive. And as you can see it only does about 10 damage, 4 damage after leftovers, so not bad, not bad, not bad. He is going to switch out here, give, letting me lead him to believe that Surf might be one of his really main, main coverage moves. He doesn't really have anything for me. As he's going to switch right back into Tapu Bulu. So anticipating this, I think I switch right into Metagross. Because Arcanine is obviously kind of at a standstill. He's been running the same ropes over and over again. So switching into Metagross is nice because it kind of lets me get a free hit off on whatever I want to. Because he definitely cannot stay in with Tapu Bulu. So... I'm just going to get off the Stealth Rocks there, anticipating the switch, because as I said, we are switching a shit ton, so having these Stealth Rocks up is going to be very, very good for maintaining that momentum on my side. He is going to go for the Earth Power as I pop my Shucka Berry and live on 69%, as I am going to do some pretty significant damage with the Earthquake. If the Grassy Terrain weren't up, I think we both would have taken a lot more damage there, but the fact of the matter is that it is, and we didn't, so I'm going to switch out here. Fearing that he might get a crit or something with the earth power and I just I didn't like how the damage was looking But he, instead he just goes right for the flamethrower Which would have definitely I think taken me out because it's not weakened by the Grassy terrain so at this point I really have no choice but to try and set up now that my multi scale is broken this thing I didn't think this thing had anything to handle me But as you can see it fires off a hidden power ice and brings me down to 9% so I pretty much don't have a reason <laughs> to switch out at this point so I'm just gonna start spamming moves and taking out whatever I can he's gonna switch right here into Tapu Bulu as I fire off the earthquake and do a pathetic 14% damage so as you can see that's kind of what I was talking about with Arcanine if I had my Arcanine with earthquake it would be kind of the same situation but here I'm gonna pop off this sub-zero slammer because I needed to I needed it I needed the damage to knock it out for 100% for sure and I didn't want to play games if I could knock this out I felt like I could at least get one more kill with this Dragonite so he is gonna go right into this Porygon too he traces my multi skill which thank god he wasn't at full health because that would have been a fucking nightmare and as you can see because he still has the EV light he tanks that outrage fairly well and fires off an ice beam so now that I know that this Porygon has Ice Beam and that the only Pokemon I brought that has a fighting type move is Thunderous, that does make me a little bit worried. So I deliberated a lot about what to go into right here and unfortunately I went into Metagross. I don't think that was my best play and don't get me wrong, I don't, I'm not sure what my best play would have been. It probably would have been going into Sableye to scare him out because he could have gotten the recover up but he would have to trade his Eviolite. But instead I just went into Metagross. Meteor Mash would have knocked out before the Protect. But it wouldn't after the protect. So I decided just to switch out into Sableye here to scare this thing out. Because it's going to get the recover off either way. Even if I get the attack boost it doesn't really matter. Because it's still a 2 hit KO on a move that can miss. On a Mon that has recover. So I am definitely scared of this Porygon. As he switches right onto Mana Feet while I hit the knockoff. Letting me know that he's actually a Z move. Which scares me. So I imagine it's Z Rain Dance, and I'm like, okay, here he goes. He's setting up for Z Rain Dance. 
but he actually goes for the Z heal bell, which heals him all the way up. He doesn't have anything status right now, but I thought that was a good tech because he got to use it both in its regular form and Z form. So I'm going to fire off a foul play here, trying to get some damage off, and he's just going to start setting up tail blows and stuff. I fire off the burn, which doesn't really do anything for me. I was just kind of sacking off Sableye at this point because I didn't want to switch into anything else. Which is kind of stupid. I should have switched into Tepu Fini because Tepu Fini can kind of take everything it had. But that's one thing I can tell you is that it's, it's kind of my downfall. I'm not scared to... Also, he does crit me there. It was a two-hit KO, which is definitely unfortunate. I probably could have lived. But... Anyway, here I went into Metagross, which was a horrible play. At this point, I'm kind of not playing my best in this little middle part. I do bring it back around. You know, I, I played well at the beginning part, but here after the after the save light crit, it was it was a little unfortunate. But I am gonna go into Tapu Fini, which I should have just done in the first place. It is my resist to main defeat. But you know, regrets, regrets, regrets. I am just gonna fire off either the Moonblast or the Scald here. I cannot remember which one in particular. But one of the two, yeah, Moonblast. And get the special attack drop on the Porygon too. So I know that with the special attack drop, I can do a fairly good job of walling this Porygon. It can't really do a whole lot to me. So I'm just going to keep firing off the Moonblast. Yeah, he can recover, but Moonblast and Scald are kind of doing the same amount of damage. And he only has so many recovers. So I don't see a reason not to just keep spamming them. I do get the crit there. But I mean, it still is a is a, a long shot to KO, so it's not like the crit really mattered. This is this would be a stall match if we just sit here doing this. So he's just gonna keep firing off tri attacks and alternating recovers and stuff. Is I'm just gonna keep getting the special attack drops, further lessening the chance that he can really do anything. Um, maybe in Misty Terrain, if he can burn me or freeze me or so, outside of Misty Terrain, if he can burn me or freeze me with tri attack, but. As you can see, he's just going to keep recovering as we spam Scalds and Moonblast and things like that. So, he is ahead 5-3 to three right now, which is super unfortunate. But we do have some pretty good mons to handle what he has left. So, as you can see, he is going to switch into the Heat Train here. Maybe as assuming I was going to go for Moonblast, but I do go for the Scald and knock it out. So, that's going to bring us down to 4-3. to three. He goes right into, I think, his Mega Glade. Leading me to believe that he has Leaf Blade because there's no other reason he would go into Glade if he didn't have Leaf Blade. But due to my Calyx, I can probably live it. So I stay in and I do. I live it with 29% health and fire off a Moonblast and go ahead and knock out Glade. So we've quickly brought this from a 5-3 down to a 3-3. His Porygon 2 is definitely a problem, but I do have Focus Blast on Thunderous. The Zabdos is fresh and baby face which is definitely unfortunate but with the rocks I can, it can afford me a couple of turns while it tries to defog and things like that he expects me to switch there into thunderous which I don't I decided just to fire off a moonblast getting me some more damage now what I really need is I just need this thing to be below 40% because that's what I need for, to, to take it out with the comfortably take it out with the HP ice obviously I'm gonna go for it no matter what the you know what the what his uh, HP is, but I would feel very comfortable getting it below 40%. So I'm going to stay in with Tapu Fini, sack it off, just keep Moon Blasting as he goes down to 60%. So right here, I'm going to go into Arcanine at extreme speed because based on my calcs, that's going to put him at about 30. And he has Life Orb, meaning that he will be chipped down even more, which is all I need to, to kind of break through with Thunderous T. So as I said, he does. It, it goes exactly the way we planned, and he's at 21%. So this is definitely in range of an HP Ice. And fearing the trace on that Porygon, I don't want to go for Thunderbolt. So I'm just going to go for the Hidden Power Ice here and knock it out. So now all we have to do is hit some Focus Blast on this Porygon 2 and Thunderbolt this Manaphy because we do have speed. And then that's GG. So... He does have Protect. He's trying to stall me out of these Focus Blasts. As you know, I do only have eight. So this is the point in the battle where I'm getting very, very nervous because this is super winnable. We did some misplays. We do miss the Focus Blast, which really blows. But he goes for the Recover. So <laughs> this is where it gets crazy. He's going to Protect again, and we're going to go for the Focus Blast. So in order to win, we have to hit two Focus Blasts in a row, and we know he has Ice Beam. So if we can live one Ice Beam, we have a good chance of winning this game. As you can see, we get 54, which is a max roll. 
which is amazing because after that max roll, all we need to do is hit, but he froze me. And if you guys know anything about Pokemon, we're going to stay frozen, and he is going to fire off the Ice Beam and win the game 2-0, putting us at 2-2 and a negative 3 differential, pretty much effectively knocking us out of the GBA FDL on a freeze. Which is super unfortunate, but I'm not going to act like I could have... I couldn't have played better. There's plenty of plays in the middle that you guys heard me talk about where I should have switched to Feeny or lots of different things where I could have put myself in a better position to win the end game, but I didn't do them. I still had a chance to win. Um, I mean, I did have to hit another Focus Blast, which is all you guys know is really hard, but unfortunately, that's just how the cookie crumbles. He did get the freeze. Eh? He got what he needed to win the game. I, I, I don't want to be mad about hacks because as I said I could definitely could have played better earlier that was my win con and I did lose out but you can't be mad at the hacks because like he did he didn't do it on purpose like you know there's not a button he presses that makes me freeze um, even though that was his one of his two win cons there the other being a focus blast miss but really really good game to Arctic Weavile I mean that the game itself was was very very well played he didn't misplay that much at all um, definitely a lot less than I did and while it is definitely as I said it's definitely unfortunate that the game ended on hacks because to some people I feel like they'll they'll diminish how good the game was because of the hacks they'll be like oh no like that game ended so bad like we'll never know like in my opinion he did play better than me he definitely deserves to win so life's too short to be mad about hacks man this is a game that we love why let you know we know what we signed up for when we came into it we know about freezes and shit why let that ruin your day so Anyway, like, subscribe, comment, y'all know the bullshit. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you're enjoying this, I think I said in my last video, I will be uploading some Summer Showdown videos as soon as we get started with that. And yeah, so y'all just stay with us. <laughs> uh, you know, keep coming by the channel, and I appreciate y'all's love. So see y'all later. Have a good one.